interesting question. I was just asked the other day why I would build my own house rather than coming to Russia and building or buying a ready-made house. And that is a great question. You know, that is a great question. Why didn't we buy a ready-made house? And I guess the main thing is that it's so satisfying to build something with your own hands to do something. I was thinking that right now as I'm working on some plumbing stuff. Why don't I just hire a plumber? Well, I could. I could do that. But if I'm able to do it myself, it's so satisfying to be able to build something with your own hands and be able to stand back when you're done and say, hey, man, we made that. It feels good. It's just nice. Not to mention it saves a lot of money. And if you have the skills to do it, you should do it yourself for those two reasons. It feels good to get something done and build it and stand back and say, hey, we did that, especially if it's as a family unit, feels even better. And because it saves a lot of money to do it myself. A ready-made house is a lot more money than uh, me building my own. The last reason, sorry, I gotta clean up my crock. The last reason would be because then I can build it exactly how I want it. Uh, that was probably even more important here than it would be in Canada. In Canada, at least I can convey my thoughts very easily to a builder because we both think the same language or speak the same language and think the same language think the same culture uh, here that would be very challenging to try to explain no no I would like it done this way uh, when you don't speak the language and it's a different culture and they have different preconceived notions before you even start building so I guess that would be the long and short of it trying to organize and lay out this basement bathroom. What we're installing is just something so, well, it's gonna be permanent, but right now, so we have a uh, toiletry and showers and everything hooked up inside. So we're gonna put a shower stall here, toilet here. We got this pump in the back. This is not the right toilet. We're gonna to be getting another toilet, but uh, we'll be hooking the toilet up to this. The sink will be hooked up, or the shower hooked up to this, and the sink coming from over here will be hooked to this, as well as laundry on the other side of this wall, so that we have all amenities here on farm as we get ready to finish off this house and get registered. Well, that's what we're working on, and uh, we're very used to plumbing, just like we're used to electrical and used to everything else, but it's so different here. Uh, they use different types of plumbing pipes, different types of fittings, and uh, it's, so it's a learning curve. Uh, obviously, the first time I started doing plumbing in Canada, I had to learn as well. I started with copper pipes, learning how to solder those, and then moved to PEX pipes. This is all plastic, and they have those here as well, if you're familiar with that. But they don't, I have not yet found shark bite fittings, and also the type of crimps that we use for PEX pipe is different here. So I've actually bought a tool that will expand the PEX, and then you slip it onto the fitting, and then it shrinks itself back down. Uh, We'll see how it goes. We'll learn together, I guess. If you're a plumber and you live here, you obviously know what this is all about. If you don't, then you'll be learning along with us as we figure it all out. The lighting's a bit terrible this morning. This is part of a shower stall that we're installing. And we'll get it all figured out. That's the top portion. Bottom portion is there. This is the controls. We've got glass and stuff in the boxes yet. We'll get it figured out. You working on some breakfast? Lips are glued shut. You working on some breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. I'm having some issues with this wash machine. I think it's working again now. All electronic spaceship material. Uh, anyway, it's okay. I'm looking into some solar options. Our last place was off grid because electricity is extremely expensive in uh, where we were living in Canada. And we decided to just go off grid and we're done. We have our own system. So I had batteries in there and I had a inverter charger unit from GrowWatt. It was a 48 volt, so we had our panels wired 48 volt going into the house, filled the batteries up, and then the uh, inverter transferred that to 120 volt power, which is all we need in Canadian. Uh, Why well, we had 120 and 240, but we only ran 120 in our house. The only thing that we had in the house that was 240 was our clothes dryer. And whenever Anissa needed to use it, we ran it off the generator. 
everything else was 120 volt power. So uh, here it's a little different. Obviously, it's 220, so those units exist as well. Um, and even the grow watt one that we had, if you I forget how it worked, you could you could stack them basically, so you could turn it into 240 volt power, which would effectively uh, work here as well. So I'm looking into those options right now. Solar, we are pretty far up north compared to where we were latitude wise on the globe so i don't know i think you'll be struggling to get enough sunshine in the winter time to keep batteries full but this unit also had generator uh portion to it and you could also set it up i didn't have mine that sophisticated but you can set it up in such a way that when your battery levels drop it'll automatically kick the generator on in order to keep itself full so that is something we'd be interested in the other part is that the generator does not necessarily produce clean power but the inverter does. And so for things like laptops that are more sensitive to clean power, it then cleans it up and you have good power. You can have a generator standing there, it'll kick it on automatically, turn on your batteries, charge the system, and all your stuff in the house never notices anything. You just have constant power in the house running off this battery. Got disrupted with a phone call, no idea who it was. Couldn't understand them. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking at putting in that maybe, so at least we have some electricity here. And I'm told once we have electricity hooked up and basic amenities, then we can register the home. The guy was here today measuring everything up for the home. He'll have to draw the technical plans, which we already had all drawn up, but I guess he wants to draw his own, whatever. It's his job. It's what he does, so it's okay. So he's going to do all that. That's one of the steps needed for registering the home. It is definitely way more complicated and involved here than what we're used to in Canada. Uh, there's none of that happens. I mean, you apply for a building permit in Canada, you build your home, there's several steps and stages through the building process where the inspector comes out and inspects it, makes sure it's built properly according to the Canadian Building Code Standards or Ontario Building Code Standards, wherever you are, I guess. Um, when it's done, when the final inspection is done, you then receive an occupancy permit, which allows you to move into your house. Uh, I guess you could say it's kind of similar here. There's no building permits per se. There is a bit of a code, but it's not enforced. So you can kind of build whatever you want within means or within within reason. I guess that's the word. Um, obviously, you want to build a good house anyway. You're going to put your family in there. You're not going to build some kind of shack that's going to fall over. Uh, but then, yeah, then then you have to apply to have it registered, and you cannot live see that's something that's different you need to register yourself here when you're in russia so even if you come here on a tourist visa and you're just traveling around you have to be registered somewhere and so you have to carry around this piece of paper which is your registration now we would kind of have something similar with our driver's license and with your tax documents you need to have an, a physical address but nobody would ever check if you're there or not it doesn't really matter where your address is as long as they can send you mail that's all that really matters in canada here you do, as an immigrant, need to be present because they can come check. And um, and then, of course, you need to be around. And if you're not there where you say you are, then that could create a problem. That doesn't mean, of course, you can go shopping, you can do things. But wherever you say you live, that's where you're supposed to be. I actually think there's some really good points to that because you don't want illegal immigrants running all over the place. Uh, but I also think it's a royal pain because large families, it's really hard to find accommodation and it, it's really hard to find someone that will be willing to register you. As friends of ours, the Australians in El Tai, have faced, it's very difficult, and they've run into some troubles as of late by living on their farm, even though they're not registered on that farm, has created some problems. This is something that I would also like to see changed to make it easier. I'm not necessarily saying get rid of it all together because I see some good points in it as far as illegal immigration uh, which is an issue in the West big time so something you need something but I always think that those illegal immigrants probably are not going to stay uh, where you want them to stay anyway right they're illegals so I don't know I, I agree there's some measures would be good but also you need to recognize a large family it's a royal pain in the neck to get registered we lucked out we had this church group that reached out and, and helped us with accommodations and they have uh, you know registered and done all this work for us so for us it's been a fairly smooth transition but not everybody's going to have that and so a hotel will automatically register you but a house won't you might find a house to rent and then find out that the owner of the house isn't willing to register you and that's a pain because uh, what are you going to do you're going to come over here with a large family and a bunch of children and you have to be registered 
right? You can't stay in a hotel forever. You can't really register yourself. I went along the first two times. Uh, it needs to be done there periodically. I went along the first two times, and man, it's just a big confusing mess, and, and you know, a pile of people, and you're waiting and waiting and waiting, and some grumpy woman. <laughs> They're not grumpy every time, I'm sure, but this one was. Uh, you know, wants your documents, and you hand them that, and they shut the window again, and you stand there and wait and wait, and I had no idea what was going on. And when I was fresh off the plane, I understood almost zero Russian at that point, so... Uh, it's something I would like to see change down the road. It would definitely be handy. If you're going to invite more traditional families to come, these families, I mean, a large family consists of more than three people. Here, a large family, I mean, three people is considered large. Uh, I'm talking families, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of extra stuff, and that registration becomes a pain as well. So, anyway, back to our house. We need to get this basic amenities, at least, before we can have... Uh, registered here and then we can finally be registered in our own home on our own farm and then we would be allowed to live here full time at that point whereas now we transition back and forth to the city all the time uh, eventually we would like to live here obviously all the time and be able to look after our livestock once we get them some shopping here and uh, everything's so different just the plumbing stuff everything just hooks up differently there's nothing wrong with it it's just like it's just nothing that I've seen before and so getting some help and uh Another guy needed needed to be helped too, and then he's like, he looked at me like, hey, he recognized who we were, and then he asked, and so I have no idea what he said. So he used the translate, figured, oh yeah, yeah, that's me. He said, oh, you go first. Shook my hand. It just seems so weird still to be treated like that and people be recognized. Just the simple fact that we moved to another country, it's kind of amusing. People have written books, some have a great look that covers the magazines for kids who are 17. But I don't know what to do, staring into the blue sky and just waiting for a sign. Some, they are certain of what awaits them when it all ends. But I don't know what will happen to me. Will I be remembered in a century? Like dust in the wind Or the talk of the town That we are living in Well, I don't know I don't know How could I know What lies ahead of me Am I part of a grander Master plan Will I be washed away Like lines in the sand Oh, the lighting is terrible here We are working on some plumbing yeah. Trying to get some lighting here so you guys can actually see me down underneath the sink here in the laundry room. I'm turning the light to show you, but that doesn't help. I gotta show you with this thing. So we are busy doing plumbing. We've got the uh, septic pipes all installed pretty much. And we're now working on getting the water running. The plumber already had the uh, pressure tank in and the filter here. And then it was coming in there. So we've attached onto it. We've got a sink here now, just the cold water portion, the hot water I'm working on. The water heater is behind me. I know people get upset when I call it a hot water heater. I was amazed at how many people get upset about that in the past. And in German, it's actually called, at least the box calls it a warm washer speaker. So it's a warm water, I don't know what speaker is. Tank, I guess, hot water tank. So maybe that's why I say hot water tank, because it comes from my Dutch side. I haven't got a clue. It's a hot water heater, man. That's the water heater behind me. We're hooking that off. Busy putting this guy in right now. This type of connectors looks a lot. This looks like PEX pipe, and those look like PEX fittings, but it is actually quite different. So this is the fitting which in itself is essentially the same. This is like a three quarter and that's like a half inch. Obviously the metric though. The difference though is that you got these guys here. Can you hold this camera for a moment? Oh no, I got the pipe right here. Okay, there's a piece of pipe. Then you need to shove this guy onto the end of the pipe to seat it all the way. And then this doesn't actually fit in there. There's no way for that to fit in. So we have a tool, this guy, which I may need to find a battery for in order to operate. This guy stretches it. All right, so this tool here is meant for stretching it. 
Okay, you stick this inside the pipe, and then when we pull this trigger, it expands it. And then when it's big enough, and it takes quite a while, uh, and no, it doesn't take that long, it, it stretches pretty quick, but you have to very quickly shove this guy in before it's too small again, or it won't fit in the hole. When you're done, it looks like this, and the pipe shrinks back down around these here grooves and these lines, holding it tight so it never slips off. Absolutely time consuming. That's, uh, I, I mean, it's a neat system, sure, but it's, it's time consuming. Is it faster than copper pipe? Yep, probably. But what we're used to is very similar to PEX pipe. You literally just shove it on the fittings, they fit right on, and then there's a crimp that goes around it and you just crimp it. When I lived in Western Canada, they had a different kind of crimp. I did not like it at all. The one I'm used to in Ontario is a very simple, I don't know, I can't really put it on the screen because I don't have it here, but it's super simple system to crimp with a little ear on it and you squish that ear and that's it, done. Extremely fast way of doing plumbing. And that's how we've done it. Other than shark bite, shark bite was the only thing that I would think would be better. If you're in the West, you might know what shark bite is, but it's basically just a push on fitting and they're reusable. You can take them off again, use them somewhere else. Uh, shark bite, the problem is that it's not economical, it's way too expensive. The other one that I'm used to is very cheap, very affordable, very much the same types of fittings, but they just literally slip right into the pipe and then you just clip them down. Super fast. Can't I can't plumb faster than that. This is it's interesting, but it's very time consuming and you need this fancy expensive tool in order to make it work. Anyway, that all said, it's all that's available here that I know of right now. Uh, they do have some kind of push on fittings, but that was a pain. We tried one so far right here. And maybe it's because there's different styles of PEX pipe, perhaps. Maybe if we had a different one, it might work better. But it's still not just push on. You push on and then you still have to get wrenches and tighten it up. Push on that I'm used to, you literally just shove it on. So anyway, other than that, we are getting it together. Hopefully have some water running. We've got the bathroom basically all hooked up. There's a toilet, shower, and a sink going in there. Right over here, we've got it plumbed for laundry facilities. So we'll be able to wash some clothes here, be a dryer and a washer going in here. It's just temporary right now, but uh, at least allows us to be more functional while we are here on the farm. Uh, you know, we can go to the city and get showers and stuff like that too, but we do spend a bunch of our time here working. It's nice to just have that available here. Uh, also heat, working on heat as well. So this guy is capable of running radiators as well as providing our domestic hot water needs and I can hook up a outdoor boiler to it, and that's what we're going to be getting. One of our viewers uh, was done with their boiler and has graciously offered to gift it to us. So we will be picking it up. It's uh, large enough for our home, I believe, but it'll be too small to do the workshop and any greenhouse or anything like that. But for this winter, it'll suit us just great. We're gonna hook it up and basically burn wood, heats water, that water will then come into the house and it will help heat this guy for our domestic needs and will also uh, heat the home uh, through the radiators. And then if it goes out, fire goes out, whatever, of course this will be plugged in, so we'll still have domestic hot water. And the boiler itself also has an electric element in it, so it will also be able to heat the home on electric. So uh, electric is still a problem. We do not have electricity here on the farm. I don't know when it's coming, hopefully sometime soon. Last I heard it might take another four months to get it. I hope it doesn't. I hope we can uh, convince someone to do it a little bit faster than that because it's a royal pain. And it's basically going to be the only thing that's stopping us from moving in. Um, I've stopped mudding right now just to get this plumbing done so just so things are a little simpler here for us. But I can have uh, one more week and I would have the upstairs done. Then I got to do the main floor yet. Uh, but we're literally like a month away from being done and moving in and uh, we need a few amenities obviously. Uh, what else? I think that's it. I'm gonna get back to work. connect this pipe to this pipe you can see them both awesome I gotta shove this guy on first like so then we take this guy and we put him in there lift it up a bit bud oh right there is good can you see it maybe zoom in
All right, then you gotta hope that it's good. Down a bit. Okay, back up. Up a bit more. All right. And it's on. And I find that kind of inconveniently time consuming. <laughs> Alright, your elbow in the right spot up there? Um, yeah, right there. Okay, it's not quite right, but it should work. Can you go down or up? Uh, right there, I guess, is okay for me. Yeah, if anything, I want to go up. Hey, darling. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life away On the road with a couple of tunes in a 